What's going on guys? So today I am out here at Holiday World in Dallas, Texas, and I am gonna show you a really cool trailer. This is a bullet. This is made by Keystone. This is the Ultralight, and this is a really interesting size trailer because this is really where you start shifting from half ton towable to three quarter ton towable, in my opinion. But I got a guest with me. Hey, hey Miles. Hey, how's it going? Not too bad. So Miles is one of the reps out here and he has his own YouTube channel that I was able to check out. And his channel is really cool actually because he gives a very, very honest approach to RVs. He does a great job recording the insides of them. And, and we had a long conversation about towing, towing specs and things like that. But before I ask you a question, I wanna look at the numbers on this unit if that's okay. Cool, yeah, let's go take a look. All right, so this has a gross vehicle weight rating of 7,600 pounds, has a cargo capacity of 1,720 pounds, rides on 14 inch D rated tires, 14 by 5.5 inch wheels. So with 7,600 pound GVWR, roughly 10% of that transfers when the trailer's dry. So you're probably gonna have about, uh, so you're gonna have about 600 pounds transferring when the trailer's dry. When it's fully loaded up, you know, 10% of, 7,600, 760 pounds, plus a few hundred pounds on top of that. I'm gonna say you're gonna be right around 900 pounds loaded up when you hitch up to a truck with this. Yeah, now, probably. I'm not saying that a half ton can't handle that because there certainly are half tons that have the payload capacity for that, plus the people, cargo supplies in the truck. But for this size of trailer, I would generally recommend a three quarter ton truck. What's your say on that? Yeah, so I agree with what he's saying that there's definitely, you know, you're, you're pushing and getting closer to what your um, hitch weight and payload capacity is gonna be and things like that with a half ton in this truck. A lot of it too, what I always talk to customers about is what kind of towing are you gonna be doing? Where are you gonna be going? Where do you plan on going? And I try to get people to plan as far out into the future as they possibly can because some people being here in Texas, they think they're only ever gonna camp locally and they're only gonna take it, you know, an hour down the road and think that they can pull whatever they want, but then don't think far enough ahead to think, okay, well maybe in two years, I might want to take a trip into Colorado. Yeah. Or I might want to yeah. go somewhere else that is different terrain than what we originally expected. And you try to you know, tell people to plan for those things and buy the RV that will be capable of being pulled for whatever situations they may come across even well out into the yeah. future. Or the truck, right? Or, or truck, upgrading yeah. your truck. Or upgrade the truck, yeah. Yeah. Maybe if you're just in yeah. flat areas of Texas and you have a half ton max tow package capability of towing this, you might be pushing the payload capacity, but maybe while you're in Texas and while you're local, but then start considering, like Miles said, down the road, are you gonna be possibly going up to Jackson, Wyoming or Colorado or out to Arizona and you're gonna need something bigger and more powerful and more stable to handle yeah. something like this, exactly. especially when you're coming down a mountain pass at 65 miles an hour. Yeah. That's really where those brakes start yeah. getting tested yeah. with this size trailer on a half ton. Exactly. Anyways, Miles has his own YouTube channel. What is your YouTube channel? Yeah, so it is Miles RV. So that's Miles spelled with a Y, which you can see here on my name there. So Miles spelled with a Y, RVs on YouTube. And like I was telling him here that when I got into this industry and started learning about RVs, uh, big Truck Big RVs was one of the very first YouTube pages that I came across and learned a bunch from. So definitely really cool to be here today and work together. Yeah, and there's, you know, there's all sorts of great channels out there. You know, I told an automotive review channel, a really, really, really popular one that all of you probably know. Uh, they, you know, told me at one point, maybe we should start doing RV reviews since you do truck reviews. And I said, you know what, do it. The more knowledge, the more information you can spread to make buyers informed, the better. That's all that matters to me. So yeah. I think there's a guy, Josh, over at, uh, what, what's the name Bish of it? Bish, Bish yeah. RV yeah. used to be another one. And then you have Matt's RV reviews. I mean, they're all just doing you guys a service. They're pr providing you with more and more information about RVs. To me, it's not one of those things where we're competing against subscribers. That doesn't make sense. For me, if you subscribe to them and you get knowledge from their channel that you don't get from mine, that's great. If you subscribe to Miles and he provides you knowledge that you don't get from my channel, that's absolutely great. It's a community and we're all trying to give you all the best possible information. And you should always research everything you hear from us, yep. right? Because we may say something <laughs> about an RV that might not apply to your specific situation. Yep. So you should always research every channel that's out there. Exactly. That's my opinion. Subscribe to them all. 
I'm not, I'm not saying, uh, you know, that my channel's the best at all. My channel is just another channel that talks about RVs. It's yeah. really what it comes down to. And I get things wrong. <laughs> I don't work at a dealership. I don't spend every day in an RV in the sense that I'm going to point at something and know exactly what that is every single time, like this guy right here. I mean, he, he <laughs> put, throws some really great videos out because he can spend time with these inside of them, in and out of them all day long. He gets the hard questions every day as well. So I appreciate yeah. that service as well, and buddy. Like you were saying, I like to mention in a lot of my videos too, I'm no service certified RV expert you know I haven't been doing this for 20 25 years it's something that you know I'm three years into the industry and my family has had RVs since I was 12 years old but still there's things I'm learning every day so a lot of times too even just sourcing the comment section is awesome and I learned so much from y'all it's viewers as well that know more than I do and then obviously from the great channels out there of other people in this community yeah. like big truck big RV so like you were saying it's it's a community and it's definitely good to be subscribed to various different outlets to get all of the information all compiled together. I completely agree, my friend. So we're gonna take a closer look at this trailer. You know, the first thing that I kind of want to point out with it is bullets gonna be on what I would consider to be the mid upper end of travel trailers, yeah. right? You certainly can go way higher up in price. You can certainly go way lower in price, but this tends to fall in that average range where most people are probably budgeting their first RV. Yeah. So. Um, first of all, front fiberglass cap, fiberglass side, has a power front tongue jack. It's gonna have twin 20 pound propane cans. I like the power disconnect. Let's take a look at the inside and work our way out. All right, walking up the LCI solid steps into this 261 RBS with thermal package and a 30K furnace. Should be relatively easy to heat up in the winter. Let's pan around here a little bit so you guys know what we're looking at. This is a mid living room, mid kitchen unit which means there's gonna be a big bathroom on the other side of this door, which we'll show you in a little bit. Got a nice size TV mounted in front and got some storage space right here, which is really nice. So what most people are looking for that I hear a lot, probably more than anything else for people in the travel trailer market is they want beater seating directly across from the yep. TV. And that is what this offers you right here. You guys have heard me say that in just about every video. And it's not because you're gonna spend all your time in the RV, but five minutes of craning your neck to the side to look at a TV from your sofa is gonna really make you hate your floor plan really quick. <laughs> yeah, it really sure will. Sure yeah. So, and there's gonna be rainy days or there's gonna be cold, cold days where you just don't wanna be outside. You wanna be in your warm RV and having theater seating that's facing the TV can make a world of difference in comfort. Definitely. Yep. Yep. So yeah, this is gonna be a great floor plan for that. And sometimes it can be difficult to find those floor plans that give you that seating directly across from the TV. So yeah, I like this floor plan for that. And you get these big, large theater seats here. So it's really comfortable as well. Yep. One thing I would have liked to see, it has pleated blinds, which are decent during the day. But the problem is, is at nighttime, they're not really gonna provide too much privacy. Cause if the lights are on inside, you can kind of see through. I do wish that they would have included day night or blackout blinds on it. Yeah, I agree. So the nice thing about Bullet though, is they kind of have something for everybody. Cause Bullet actually has three different brands that they have. So they have the Bullet Crossfire, which is their lower tier brand the regular bullet that we're in right now and then they have the bullet premiere and then when you get into the bullet premiere that's going to give you things like the pull down blackout shades you start to get things like the fireplace in the unit stuff like that that isn't in this bullet at this price point they're all things that you can upgrade as well if there's individual aspects that's exactly what i was about to say yeah <laughs> yeah you can buy the blinds and throw them on yourself so you have that functionality but the other side of it as well is you can always just rip all this stuff up and put like residential blinds on. yeah exactly a lot you of know? people do it's that just a well. wood backer yeah yeah all right, so theater seating, we have a booth style dinette. This is gonna turn into a bed. You're gonna have storage on both sides of it, which is really nice. And this is really good storage. This is great storage, especially if you have like a small animal and they want a place to go and, and get comfortable. That's always really nice. This is one large slide out right here. There's only one slide out on this unit and it's a super slide, full extension, three foot slide. Swinging around this way, you have a nice solid surface countertop, single base and stainless steel sink three burner cooktop over here have a nice small little oven probably wouldn't fit a turkey very well but who's going to cook a turkey in this nice compact furion microwave up top cabinets all around the nice thing about those cabinets is this is all unobstructed through here so it's actually a full l-shaped cabinet so when you open this up you can see that it goes all the way through to yeah. the very back wall so that's something a little unique about the storage in this one that yeah. you don't see in all the other ones 
MSRP on this unit is 50,853, but I assume you guys sell it for a lot less than that. Yeah, it's probably gonna be somewhere, you know, around that 40 to 45 range, somewhere in that area, but that's what we're here for, to get you a great deal on it and try to make something work for whatever your budget is. Absolutely, and this looks like a 12 volt refrigerator. Yep, uh, it's gonna open on oh, this it's side. Gonna open right on this side. Yeah. Okay, so this is a General Electric or GE yeah. 12 volt refrigerator. This is a huge refrigerator for this size of trailer. Typically, you'd get something much smaller. If this were a gas electric, it'd be significantly smaller. So these 12 volt refrigerators are really nice. And what's the perk of a 12 volt refrigerator? Well, it operates off the 12 volt system of the RV. So you're not having to use your propane. It's far more efficient. It operates very much like a residential refrigerator um, and they've gotten larger, they've gotten more efficient. And if you have a solar system, the solar system can maintain the batteries. Does this unit come with a solar panel on it? It does, yep. So this is another Keystone product. So for 2022, everything Keystone from their most entry level trailers all the way up to their Montanas and Alpines and Raptor toy hauls they all come standard with at least a 200 watt solar panel. Yep, and I think the Montanas can go all the way up to like 360 or higher than um, that, right? They actually have a 1200 watt solar package that you can get. It's their 1200i solar package that is, I mean, it, it comes with everything you need to fully run the entire RV off of solar, so pretty crazy. Oh, uh, that's right. That's what, yeah. six panels up there? Six uh, 200 watt with, panels, It right? comes with four. Four? Um, four of the 300 watt panels. Oh, wow. Two lithium batteries and all kinds of stuff like that so that's very yeah. cool yeah a lot of really cool stuff all right so now we're going to move to the front here looks like a queen size bed there's not going to be an option for a king size mainly because there's not the room on the side of it you got two drawers on each side you got a nice little end tables there at the end with power and usb plus a shelf above that is really convenient there's some rvs that just block all that off or they make it wardrobe storage when you're really never going to reach that far back to put anything back there so having it right there is really nice you can throw your ipad there your phone your coffee your cpap machine all that stuff there's a perfect spot for it you have some storage up top up here this unit only has one air conditioning unit in it, but can you get this thing installed with two units? Yes, so it is a 50 amp RV, so you are gonna be able to get a second AC on here if you want. Some people may not feel that they need that second AC, but here we are in Texas, and I could see a lot of people that definitely see the value in having that AC in the bedroom as well, especially in the summer months, so you can get that second AC installed. See what I mean, guys? He works here. He knows all the information. <laughs> now let's take a look at this restroom real quick. All right, so you have this massive restroom at the back end of this RV. Huge shower stall area. I'm going to say it's about probably three feet by two and a half feet. Nice tall ceilings. He's what, six foot one? Yeah, six foot one. Six foot two probably with these shoes on, and I can stand in there and show you where I'm at. Okay, you got in a there. barreled ceiling in here, so, and you'll see here. For me, I'm probably, if I go all the way up, my head will kind of tap right here, but with this bubbled area here, I can still stand yeah. here comfortably. And then this is kind of cool too. They changed this for the 2022 model where this pulls out and you have, this is almost like a cloth material yeah. right here. So, and then on the uh, inside here, it's more of a plastic. Like a smooth even, vinyl, right? Yeah, a smooth yeah. vinyl or something like that. Yeah, so really easy to use though. Very lightweight, this slides across, trap yourself in here. No, that's really cool. And it just goes to show just, you know, even though you're looking at a certain height in here, you have to also look at how high the actual shower pan is off the ground. Exactly. And in this case, it's about four inches off the ground, which yeah. means he has plenty of height here, but as the ceiling radius is down and the shower steps up, you, that's something you want to be concerned about. And so if you're six foot four, you may want to go to a taller unit. Yeah. Yep. And sure. you have room here for toiletries. This looks like a porcelain toilet. Yep. That is a porcelain toilet. And uh, he mentioned that this actually takes a residential style toilet seat as long as you get it in the round bowl. Yep. So you can basically go to Home Depot or Lowe's and pick that up if you want something with a slow closing lid. Yep. Okay, coming back here, huge, huge area. I mean, this is just an enormous vanity area. I like when they put these small basins in. I think it, in the bathroom, it's almost absurd when you see these huge sinks sometimes. This is the perfect size. It frees up, not that you really needed to free up any space in here, but it frees up some space in here. You have your 110 outlet here. You're going to have your medicine cabinet right here. Plenty of room inside. Light switch over here as well. Plus, you're going to have storage underneath the sink. You got four drawers here as well. Very, very nice space. And then you have your skylight on that side, and then your vent fan on this side. Now this is actually kind of cool because typically they're really close together, and because it separates it out, you get a lot more light kind of spreading out inside of this restroom, which is nice. 
Yeah, it definitely feels very bright and even with all the gray cabinetry and everything, it still feels very bright in here and have plenty of natural light, especially in that bathroom. It really is bright in there for sure. Absolutely. Let's take a look at the outside. Okay, starting from the front, again, you got your power front tongue jack. You got two 20 pound propane cans. You got space up here for two batteries. It'll be placed side by side. Here's your front storage. You actually have pretty nice baggage doors. Typically on these travel trailers, you see them kind of skimp on the baggage doors, but that's a nice dense baggage door. Huge pass-through storage in here. I mean, this is enormous. Most of the time, it's about half that width. So that is a great feature. I see you have electric stabilization jacks down in the bottom. Power awning, very long power awning. Looks to be about a 16 or 18 foot power awning up top. You have the outside of your water heater here. Power outlet, cable TV, outside of your furnace. Goodyear Endurance tires. Has a bit of a wide track suspension to it, but I do like the fact that they switched to these higher end tires. Gives you a lot of peace of mind whenever you're getting into an RV, knowing that one of the expenses you can avoid is having to upgrade your tires. This looks like it rides on a BAL frame as well. So this is not a Lippert frame, this is a BAL frame. Basically one of the differences here is everything's pretty much bolted and welded in place on this frame versus almost completely welded on a Lippert frame. You have your outside kitchen right here. And let me pull that out. Is it a skillet or is it a cooktop? It's gonna be a cooktop. Okay, a so you burner, got a two burner. Top. Yep. Very nice. And back behind here, you'll have storage area. Got your small hot point compact refrigerator. And so these here, the latches on these, they are have different. That, yeah. Yeah, they have that pin that holds it in place, so that when you put that up, it's not gonna fall back down on you. And you know, unlike the magnets that. You don't have something real solid holding it. This has an actual pin that will hold it. Close. Yeah, that's cool. That's different. This is actually uh, one of the first times I've been out and actually seen these new latches. Yep. Okay, coming around this way. Here's what your back stabilizer. Again, your LCI solid steps here. You got a four inch tubular bumper here, which is nice because you can throw your sewer hose in here when you're not using it. Plus you have all LED lighting here on the back. It is wired for a backup camera. It does have a full walk-on roof, even though there's not a ladder on the back. Correct. So yeah, one of the crazy things right now in the industry is a lot of these manufacturers are just Heart having shortage. a hard time getting parts. And rear ladders is one of those things right now where they're having a hard time getting it. So it is prepped for a ladder. You can get one on there. It's just a matter of getting yeah, one. Yeah, I'm looking at all these yeah. units here. There's only like one of them with the ladder on the back. Yeah, yeah it's pretty wild. It's crazy. It's really strange right now. On this side, you have your 50 amp connection here. And one of the reasons I can imagine they're not throwing ladders on these, but they are throwing them on fifth wheels is because fifth wheels are much taller. So it's harder to find ladders to get on the roof. Exactly. This one, you could use a small A-frame and probably climb up there. Yeah. Plus you have your solar panel up there. This is a cable driven slide on this. Not frameless windows, but on something like this, it doesn't really matter. You slide these things open, you get a ton of cross ventilation. And then up here, you got your wet bay over here. Very nice. You typically don't see wet bays framed out on travel trailers. It's usually just everything's attached to the side. And that's nice that they're putting it inside of a wet bay. Over here is your solar charge controller. And it is an MPPT solar charge controller, which is really nice. What does that essentially mean? Well, that's a higher end solar charge controller. An MPPT solar charge controller takes excessive voltage that's created by the actual solar panel and converts it into amperage. So it actually provides a better charge to your battery at a quicker rate. Very, very cool. Miles? Very cool. I appreciate it. Yeah, appreciate, no, appreciate your knowledge you. on your units too. That's really nice. <laughs> try my best to know everything that I can. And so always learning, but try yep. to know as much as I can. Anyways, definitely check out his YouTube channel. It's Miles RV, yes, right? And spelled M-Y-L-E-S. Yep. Again, he could do a spin-off to some other <laughs> travel channel with the first right. name of Miles. But guys, leave a comment below. What do you think about this Keystone Bullet? Very, very cool. More of a couples unit, but you could accommodate a few small kids because of the dinette. But I like it. Anyways, leave a comment below. Guys, if you haven't had a chance, please take a moment, subscribe to my channel, give me a thumbs up, and we'll talk to you again very soon.